See, the non-proliferation lobby mm -hmm. and the non-proliferation community is small, very inclusive, mm -hmm. highly inbred. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an issue where India has, which is a to, for the membership of the nuclear suppliers group. Mm -hmm. The CTBTO, CTBT can't come into force till India ra signs and ratifies it. Is there a grand bargain which can happen where India can get membership of the nuclear suppliers group? I'm not saying the government would agree, but is there a possibility of a grand bargain? The NPT, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, has been seen for a long time as the grand bargain, and the CTBT playing an important part of it. Uh, we've, at the CTBT, argued that right now, Things are at a stage where we need to bridge the gap and the divide between nuclear weapon state and non-nuclear weapon state. And the CTBT could be an important uh, key element to that effect. If you take the nuclear supplies group, yes, we've heard many people talking about the possibility to put that on the table as negotiation with India and Pakistan and many other, many other countries who are seeking adhering to the nuclear supplies group. You're asking the executive secretary of the CTBT, of course I would say anything that could get India to join the CTBT would be acceptable to us. But what we shouldn't do is to push any country or a country like India against the wall. Is it acceptable to India? How can we make it acceptable to India? Because it's all about respect. It's all about dignity. We have to understand India the Indian civil society and their perception with this treaty and their perception with regard to adhering to the nuclear supplies group. If they feel comfortable, why not? In, in India, people say there's one particular article, Article 14, if you were to put that on hold or amend it, uh, then there is a possibility. Yeah, the Article 14, I mean, it's, uh, Article 14 uh, was set for... Uh, indeed bringing uh, countries, uh, promote the entry into force of the CTBT. But I think what is there is the fact that we had 44 Annex 2 states that were chosen to be the countries which ratification will be absolutely necessary for the entry into force of the treaty. If you ask me personally, if I was at the negotiation, this is not something that I would do. Nowhere in multilateral diplomacy we've had such a clause that is indeed making the entry into force of the CTBT so far, and at the same time, so close as well. So do you think that was a wrong move by part of your predecessors? No, I, I don't think it's, it was my predecessor. It was uh, the international community. That is true. It's, it's, it wasn't uh, a predecess, my predecessor's affairs. It was the international community during the negotiation at the Conference in Disarmament in Geneva. But as I said, you know, we can if improve. There's nothing that is not perfectible. But how we do that, bringing state together to talk, to understand India's concern, this is what I'm doing. I want to understand your concerns and see how I can deal with it. But there are things that I can do myself as executive secretary, but there's a lot that I can't do without getting all states together. Can we change some of the article of the treaty? That's not the responsibility of the executive secretary, but all state signatories as they stand today. But if that's a reason to bring India, I think that's something that maybe we should see coming and then see how we can get India to be more comfortable with where we are and see how we can improve things. And I'm ready to do that.